Welcome to the INOS Enterprise Cloud Data Center Designer Demo. In this demo, we should look at creating a data center and the simple aspects of creating servers, storage, and also networking. Once we log in, we'll see a number of options on the top banner. We'll have a direct link into the data center designer, as well as other options such as managing object storage, ability to utilize a backup console for the protection of the systems within the cloud, and also on-premises, and then lastly, a manager of resources, which allows us to manage and control users and groups and access control, IP management, SSH key management, as well as image management. Let's start off by creating a data center. We'll click on the data center designer and provide a name for our data center. We can also provide a description and select the relevant region where the data center will be created. Once you're happy with your selection, click on create data center. Initially, you'll be presented with a workspace. Within the workspace, you'll have the internet access, which allows you to start linking up your servers and creating relevant networking for direct access into the internet as well as private networking. On the left-hand side, we have a palette with the various options available to us through the designer, such as servers, the storage available to us, CD-ROMs, in case you wish to utilize ISO images for the installation of your applications, some infrastructure components such as internet gateways or internet access. We have a cross connect for the ability to link data centers together. We also have the option for load balancers, which can be utilized within the infrastructure. And then also composite instances. If we have a number of instances that are required to be deployed in one go, the interface is provided with simplicity in mind. You have the ability to pick an option from the palette, drag and drop the option onto the workspace. Here we've selected a server and we'll go through the creation process. Provide the server a name and we can also provide the relevant availability zone for the server. You also have the choice of choosing the relevant CPU architecture. So here we can choose either AMD or Intel Xeon. Note that these selections for CPUs are dedicated resources for this system only. They are not shared with other systems. They are dedicated core resources. You can also select the number of cores and also the amount of memory allocated to the server. Note that you have the choice and flexibility in relation to the application that you wish to run within that server itself. Here we can use the sliding scale to increase the number of cores or provide input in relation to the size of the memory that we wish to allocate to the server. Next we choose the storage type for the system. We pick up and drag and drop the relevant storage onto the server. Provide the disk with a name. Also, if you wish to, you could choose the relevant availability zone for the system. And then also provide the size of the hard disk in relation to the creation for this server. You also have the choice of utilizing images. These can be uploaded in relation to your own images, which could be hypervisor platforms such as VMware or Hyper-V. You can also utilize the INOS Enterprise Cloud image library, which allows you to utilize various Linux flavors as well as Windows operating systems. With the relevant image selected, we can utilize a password for the root access for the server. And also we can integrate our SSH keys into the Linux build. Let's take and drag another server onto the workspace. This time we'll create a database server and we'll provide a number of CPUs to the server as well as memory. We'll also drag and drop an SSD drive into the database and also provide a relevant size for the SSD disk. Notice that as you increase the size of the disk, the relevant IOPS are displayed below in relation to the throughput and availability. This time we can choose a snapshot. A snapshot is a, a copy of a relevant disk uh, that I've created previously and then can utilize that for further deployments of the environment. Here I'll utilize the snapshot and select the LAMP snapshot for the database. With the service created, the next step is to link up the relevant networking. And the way in which this is carried out is that you click down on the circle with a cross, drag and drop onto the relevant network connector. What I can then do is also connect in a private network by clicking down on the circle with a cross and then dragging and dropping it directly onto the database server. Here we can see visually what the network connectivity would look like, as well as the visual representation of the servers that we're about to deploy. Once we're happy with the design of the infrastructure, we can then go ahead and provision the relevant changes. If there are any errors or warnings, then these are displayed and it's then possible to resolve those errors before you go ahead and start provisioning. 
as we're happy with the relevant infrastructure, we can go ahead and provision the environment. You'll see a progress bar at the right hand side uh, and then the relevant servers will see those being provisioned out. This will take a couple of minutes based on the sizes in which I've selected here. With the environment now provisioned, we can finalize some post configuration aspects for these servers. First, let's look at the firewall rules for the actual web server itself. Here, if we click on Network tab and then scroll down, we can enable firewall by checking the box and managing the relevant rules. You have the ability to add the relevant rule in relation to TCP, UDP or any other protocol required or utilize the rules from template and select the relevant rule. Once we're happy with the relevant ports and assignments, we can click on Save. This time the provisioning process will be a lot quicker because we're just updating the relevant firewall rules. Next, let's switch our attention to access to the systems themselves. There are a number of ways in which this can be done. You could either select the web server and click on the remote console, which will open up a separate browser and allow direct access into the server. Another way of interacting is direct connection via the likes of PuTTY or RDP if it's a Windows based server which has been provisioned. That concludes the data center designer at a very high level and hopefully gives you some aspects on how to create servers and the relevant storage and network interconnects between those. Thank you for your time.